This video will explain the routine procedures to properly and safely operate the Joel GEM 2010 transmission electron microscope. Check that the chiller located behind the microscope indicates a temperature less than 18 degrees Celsius. The SIP or sputter iron pump control unit indicator must show a vacuum level below 10 to the power of minus 5 Pascal. The vacuum diagram shows the OK vacuum status. No alarms are lit. The viewing window is covered when the room light is on. Mounting the sample is a very delicate operation. The sample holder must be handled with great care. Please be especially careful. If your sample is hydroscopic, it must be dried using a hydrophilic treatment. Carefully handle your sample using tweezers. Raise the glass bell and place the sample on the grid. Close the glass bell and switch on the system. Set the timer to 2 minutes and start the procedure. As the treatment ends, remove the sample and place it on a filter paper. Close the bell and switch off the system. Place the holder box in front of you and remove the cover. Unroll the cable and carefully remove the rod tip protection. Place the holder back on its stand. Be sure that the exchange mount white support is placed in the correct position. Using a screwdriver, carefully loosen the screw that fixed the securing copper plate. Using the tweezers, rotate clockwise the securing plate. Verify which side of the sample you want to face the electron beam. For example, the surface on which you drop the power suspension and place it facing downwards in the holder cup. Using tweezers, carefully center the sample. To keep the sample in position within the holder cup, return the securing plate to the original position. To secure the plate, gently screw on the loosened part. In order to verify that the sample is correctly fixed to the cup, remove the holder from its stand and gently tap with fingers the back side of the sample holder. Remove the sample holder from its stand and align the pin with the guide groove on the goniometer. Push until it stops. Wait for two valve sounds and set the goniometer switch to pump position, pulling the lever and moving it upward. The red lamp lights up and the evacuation of the pre-chamber starts. Wait five seconds and release the sample holder. In about 8 to 10 minutes, the pre-chamber is evacuated and the green LED lights up. Gently rotate the holder clockwise until it stops. Wait for both valve sounds and the filament green LED to light up. Connect the cable to the goniometer. As the holder is inserted in the column, wait about 10 minutes until the SIP indicator returns to the original vacuum value.
Turning on the filament and bringing it to saturation is a delicate operation. To prevent permanent damage, the operation must be conducted slowly. Gently rotate the knob to every mark and at each step, wait for at least one minute. At position 3, wait 2 to 3 minutes to let the filament reach the emitting temperature. Proceed to the following step slowly, always waiting one minute at each mark. During the last steps, the value of the beam current increases from about 100 up to 105 microampere. In order to protect the filament, the difference should not exceed 6 microampere. When you end your TEM session or you need to change the sample, switch off the filament by turning the knob slowly to the off position. If you want to have a break during your session, gently turn and leave the filament knob to position 3. Press the end button to neutralize both specimen positions and tilt values. Repeat the operation twice. Disconnect the holder cable from the goniometer. Gently pull the holder until it stops, turn it counterclockwise and at the same time pull it out about 1 cm. Wait for both red and green lamps to light up and switch to the AIR position, pulling the lever and moving it downwards. Only the green light will stay on. Wait for valve sounds and an extra 15 seconds. Gently and completely pull out the sample holder. Place the sample holder on its stand. Be sure that the exchange mount is in position. Using the screwdriver, carefully loosen the screw. With the help of tweezers, remove the copper securing plate by rotating it clockwise. Carefully remove the sample from the holder cup and store it in your sample box. Using tweezers, return the securing plate to the original position and gently screw on the loose part. Carefully insert the plastic rod tip protection and remove the exchange mount white support. Roll the cable and put down gently the sample holder on its stand. Cover the holder stand with its cover, securing it with both sides snap hooks.